Hi everybody and welcome to SA Rugby Round 7 Results Weekend Wrap. Mark, I think the thing that's taking the, the news uh, is the coronavirus, or what's the correct terminology for it? COVID-19. COVID-19, yeah. Yeah, so it's Round 7. It could be the last round at this stage. Yeah. Uh, we don't know. We hope that kind of some of the season is salvaged. Uh, yeah, perfect round for James. Uh, you just got... Uh, the one run, um, and I don't know how the Chiefs actually lost that game. 24-14 uh, up with 10 minutes to go and a man up and they lost 27-24. And then obviously I overhyped the Stormers. I kind of gave them too much credit and they took a beating uh, on the weekend. I thought the 10-point differential flattered the Stormers. Serious questions and really the break can't come soon enough for Dobbo and the boys. But kudos, all credit to the Sharks. I thought they were outstanding and come to be dominated the Stormers. Yeah. At the moment, without a doubt, the best team in South Africa and top two team in the competition. Yeah, for sure. I mean, the only team that to me is, is, is on par with, with uh, the Sharks is the Crusaders. Without a doubt, in terms of consistency and the balance that they've got to their side. So you say that, you know, you're saying that the, the competition's coming, the break in the competition's coming at a perfect time for the Stormers and probably the worst time for the Sharks. Yeah, because I mean, they were on such a high, they're playing such, such great rugger. They would have entertained the likes of the Chiefs now, and you would have backed them to beat the Chiefs. Uh, uh, and that's a good win to get against one of the, the tournament contenders. Uh, you know, as people say, who knows where this virus is going to end? So any sports match pales in comparison. But if we keep it strictly down to the first seven rounds and, and the way the season has unfolded, just fantastic effort from the Sharks. Uh, you know, every week people like, and I was one of them, the jury's out, are they really that good? Yeah. Are they really that good? They haven't really played a pack when they played the Jaguars and they, they pumped them. They played the Stormers. I spoke to Dobbo pre the game. He said, well, he felt that the Stormers had one of the best set pieces. Sharks, one of the worst. Well, if I looked at that game, Stormers had one of the worst. Sharks, one of the more balanced, you know. And the Stormers looked rudderless and clueless. Uh, again, you look at the leadership. Is Stephen Kitts off the right guy to captain the team? He was problems. when they were 4-0. Oh. Uh, yeah, they got serious problems, though, at um, their discipline and their kind of their attitude and... I just think if I looked at the way the Sharks have played all year, there's been this joy and the sense of freedom, but also a huge honesty from the coaching staff to the team. Mm. And especially with Kerwin Boss, you are my 10, you will start yeah. regardless. No mind games being played. Um has been outstanding as a are leader. Are you saying Dobbo's playing mind games? No, I'm not saying he's playing mind games, but there's the uncertainty. It's like they sh either you back Willemsa to go straight through every game, and this is his tuition year, yeah. then he's 15, yeah. uh, then it's who's playing it uh, mm. in the loose forwards. And it's, I'm not saying it's any mind games, but it's, they started the season with a very good squad and they've lost four big name players. Of course they have, yeah. But other teams also lose big name players. So we as, thought that- As big though, Mark? Not as big in the context of a starting pack, but I did think there was far more depth to the Stormer side than it's been shown out. And uh, Willem said, 10, which were thought to be one of their strengths, has turned out to be one of their weaknesses. I'm not convinced that Jamie Roberts has, has had, he's, he's been okay without being amazingly impactful. And you just get the sense with that pack, you, you expected them to dominate a lot more than they have. Mm. And they progressively just got poorer uh, with the perfect draw. And where the shocks, I just feel that graph keeps on going up and had, yeah. has, has kept on going up. And the only game they lost on tour was one we expected them to beat, was the Hurricanes. Mm. But the game unfolded to a way that pretty much suited the Hurricanes style of play. So yeah, but I, I, just, I just thought at one stage when the Stormers were still ahead, it's like a 10-7 and a half time, I thought, how were the Stormers only three points off the pace? Uh, it was a 14, 15 point game. And then they went ahead and it was only a late try by Mpimpi that kind of gave the 10 point buffer. But they were convincingly the better side. When you looked at the game, they looked in control of it. They look composed, and you just look like the Stormers were just handing in there. Yeah, I hope that Bruce Pockenpoll is, is looking, Pockenpoll, whatever. Bruce? Sorry, Bruce? When you take a beating, you've got to take it on the chin. And my Stormers took a beating. They sure did. Um, let's talk about the, what's going to happen. I mean, you, you seem to have a lot of insight into rugby, Mark, despite what everybody else says out there. I still back you. What, uh, what's going to happen with the, with, with, uh, with the schedule, with, with, with this year's competition? I think everyone's in uncharted territory, not just in rugby and sport, but in the world. I mean, it's, it's crazy times. And, you know, people saying the world has gone mad, but we don't actually know 
Uh, you know, you're looking at your own business in terms of who works from home, who comes to the office. I've come from other offices this morning. Uh, people saying, maybe it's not as big, but if it is, are you going to be the one that then it, t it takes the blame for underestimating it? But the way, the way the world has reacted to everything, it's been this massive shutdown. It's if if um, mass gatherings are the cause of it, and that can stifle or limit the, the virus, then let's do it. And the sense you get from, from well, uh, that I get from everything I've read when it comes to the major, major sporting um, codes in the world is they're going to give it a cutoff time, which will be between now and probably May. And if they then don't have any more clarity, they will declare this, these seasons null and void and basically write it off and prepare for the next season. Um, there's been a lot of talk. I know we're a rugger show, but that Liverpool may not get be anointed champions uh, if there's no form of clarity and it'll be an null and void. Although the, the English Premier League bosses have said that they will look to delay next season's start and try and finish this one between September mm. and, and, uh, and October. And I can tell you how Liverpool will play the remaining games in one week to, <laughs> to just try and get their one or two wins. But uh, I know the, the, um, the Premier League in uh, the English Premier League uh, rugby, the Premiership, they off till May. Uh, it's indefinite with Sanzar. Uh, and ever Australia also on every level it's indefinite and no one cares about no one does care Australia. except the Brumbies at this stage but uh, but yeah it's just uh, top 14s off uh, the European Championships put on hold at the moment and I think once they're, they're the wiser as to and everyone seems to think it's this two week period now because China and then Italy was two weeks ahead of the rest of the world and how does it, how does the virus spike and uh, the infections and then what's the conversion rate so I, I would say by you mean conversion death to, to death to or to serious infection and like the because the conversion rate at the moment for recovery is set 97 percent. It's higher if you're younger. Yeah, so, a lot higher. So, I mean, so I, if you're, I'm basically a dead man walking. At this stage, I mean, well, you don't look your age, so. <laughs> but well, 38. Uh, 38. I was going to say you're still safe. Eh? Another two years, you could have been in trouble. But exactly. uh, but yeah, I mean, it's just. I, I think, and I wrote a column uh, on, for, the, for the Cape Times on Friday to say, and the base of that column was, it's either a blanket stop everything, but you can't be selective. Yeah. Stop that one. That one's behind closed doors. That one has 70,000. That one can't, uh, won't get played. And more and more since that column, and it's not because of the column, because it was no, just common no. sense. No one read it. <laughs> it's just common sense. And Jean-Jean, you can put that column big post up in the back. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's common sense that they, uh, they would just have to shut it down and people have to be disciplined. If you look at the Paris Saint-Germain game against Dortmund, so they said played behind closed doors, 20 or 30,000 people arrived outside the stadium to cheer on the, the teams. And it's this whole thing of the infection rate uh, and not necessarily the seriousness of the infection, but you had the NBA player who they said, please don't touch any of the mics because we don't know where the journalists have been. We don't know, some of them have come from different countries. He started tapping on the mic, uh, taking the piss out of it and he was, he was uh, tested positive the next day and he was the start of the NBA kind of being shut down so you got Costa walking out after the Atletico Madrid uh, Liverpool game and coughing over journalists at the side and mocking them so he's taken a beating in the media because of his disregard for it and uh, and kind of lack of discipline and I think you what, know I don't I, I, I look, mean, the way you of, coughed over people, me. A lot of people, I did cough <laughs> over you. A lot of people use that, uh, use humor when all else fails. When they don't have a clue what, you know, when they hear, I, I do believe this thing is a bit overblown through social media. Everybody in the world has a voice now, and it's pretty noisy. You can't actually hear what, what you need to hear, meaning that not the experts are speaking. So everybody's got an opinion on it, and everybody's got, uh, you know, listening to our staff talking there, people talking about masks, how ineffective they are, how effective they are. There's a lot of misinformation out there, Mark. And, no, the plenty. And, uh... and, and this is, a, uh, this is, a, uh, this is a, a, a heavier strain of flu than, than a flu. You well, if you take in terms of mass hysteria and social media, uh, this year on, on social media, HIV AIDS has had 23.2 million uh, mentions. Yeah. In the last two and a half weeks, 1.3 billion mentions for the coronavirus. I bet you it'll double in the next week. So there is that mass hysteria and there is that misinformation and people are now operating on fear as well. Yeah. Because a week ago it was, if the virus hits South Africa, for example, uh, you know, where, why would it hit? Who's, who's coming in to basically give it to us? Mm. And then you've got six cases become 16, become 61, still no deaths, 
but it's now... But when let's, let's, that's in a population of 50 million. 60, you're talking about 64 cases. I think I'm not, I stand to be corrected, but 64 cases out of 50 million people. Well, you've also got, in terms of just pure, pure, pure data, you've got seven odd billion people in the world, yeah. and you've had 160,000 cases reported, yeah. and you've had 3,000 deaths. So, and of those 3,000, 90% of them have been at a certain age. Uh, you mean old people? Old people, yeah. like 70 plus, and a lot of those old people who have had emphysema, diabetes, cancer, yeah. their, their immune their, their not, system not is down. Yeah. So Look, I think we're we need not to doctors. keep context here. So let's, let, let's get back to rugby for a second, sorry. Nick Sorry, Adobe thought we were talking about the Stormers' performance for them. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well let's look at the let's look at the play um, for uh, the Quaker Smith. There was a controversial yellow card that was given. You, you must know what I'm talking about. No, I don't. <laughs> so, okay. so what controversial play are we talking about? Now? We're talking about the opening kickoff between. Oh no, you mean the the, the, the toy? The, yeah. So you do. You do know? Yeah. No, but you said Quaka Smith. No. Okay. Well, God, saying, you um, the Japanese. No. Let's look at the. Let's look at. Oh, the, restraint red card. He should have been gone. Okay, but but Nick Mallet, the esteemed. Well, Nick loves Dobbo and he loves the Stormers. Eh? He does. So he would have said yellow, but I just and Dobbo. Dobbo. Well, let's said, have a look. Let's have a look at it. Let's have a look at the it's the toy incident. No, it's straight. Okay, so now we'll have a. So that, what do you think of that? Straight, straight a red card. It's reckless. Mm -hmm. uh, it's potentially malicious, but mm -hmm. it doesn't even have to be malicious. He lands on his head. He's potentially dead. Uh, the fact that he, where he lands, should have no bearing on it. He's no, been played. He's, uh, look, the law interpretation is yeah. he gets taken out in the air, mm -hmm. and it's a dangerous and reckless tackle. It's like you. I punched you, and they say, well, he doesn't really punch hard. It's a weak. The other guy punches me and they say it's eight weeks. Well, if he tickles my balls, it's 10 weeks, according to Joe Marler now. Yeah. Uh, so uh, to me, it shouldn't be... That's who, an awful small tickle. Yeah. Who's, who's the referee to determine the kind of potency of the punch or the potency of the fall? Well, let's uh, have a look at Quaker Smith's one. Okay, so as you can see, they're identical to me. The only difference being that Steph Detoy probably got knocked out before he finished his, his tackle. I, that I, I actually think that the, the opening one from Johan Detoy is far worse than the Quaker Smith one. The, the, the Quaker Smith one was, uh, was kind of a 50-50 call, where this one, he's just taken the guy out absolutely recklessly in the opening kick of the game. Yeah, look, to me they're identical. I mean, in terms of where they landed, the danger. So it should be in a red card. Nick, yeah. you were wrong. I, I, can, I can tell you now, if that was a Bulls player, oh, Nick would, Nick have, would said, have said, how's it <laughs> justified that he's still on the field? So, how's he, how's and and Dobbo said it afterwards. Eh? Dobbo said, look, I thought as the coach it was a yellow card, but if he had given a red, I would have had no complaints. Yeah. It was an outrageous act in the opening, opening minute of the game. Yeah. And it set the tone and just in terms of that discipline and yes, they may have been fired up, but then they kind of misdirected that fired up energy. And that's and where, this is where I think that, that Sanzar and rugby are just miles behind. Because th there's been this controversy for, 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 since the red yellow card's been introduced. It happened in the Wales game in, when we lost to them in the semi-finals in 2011. It's happened last World Cup. It's happened in the Super Rugby Championship. It's happened again. Why don't they just send someone off for t and then you can replace them after 10 minutes? Give them a yellow card, with a, send them off with an orange card if you want, and that means you can replace the guy after 10 minutes for serving, serving a penalty. Look, I just think it's the inconsistency all around and then the, not only by the referees and the TMOs, mm. but then by the judiciaries. Yeah. So you look at that punch from the, the French guy on that Scottish guy. It was a serious punch. It should have been 12 weeks. He yeah. got three weeks. With the greatest respect to what happened between Marla and, and uh, Wynne Jones, I would have understood if 
it had been at the bottom of the ruck and there was malice and he had gone in and he had groped his testicles or rucked them or... Oh, well, let's not say grope. I mean, it was hardly a grope. No, but more I'm saying if he had done grape. that, if he had done that, I would understand that. That was a joke gone badly wrong and it was yeah. a tickle. He should have got two weeks or three weeks. To give him 10 weeks, on the same day you give that guy three weeks for a punch is absurd. What I find absurd is, is, is uh, Alan Wynne Jones being a baby about it. Yeah, I know. He was, his reaction was so over the top. Completely. Anyway, not much more to talk about. I don't think we'll be talking, but we'll, we'll come back and do a show. Maybe we can do a, um, a predictive show. We can, maybe we can get a, a, a sports game and play, play, play the whole month. The whole well, week. you know, if you think I'm bad with predictions, you don't want to see me on those games. No, but you I already you take number three. <laughs> anyway, Mark, thanks for coming in, and, and hopefully this isn't the last weekend of, of rugby. Um, hopefully we'll have more clarity and, and we'll update everybody on Thursday. And I'm going for a nil draw the whole the whole rest of the way. God, I hope I, I could get that right. <laughs> nil, nil. <laughs> Six or seven games. Thanks, Mark. <laughs> Thanks, man. Mm-hmm.